Hey everybody, this is I'm Kyle of War on Modder, and today we got a special guest star, Steph, old guy who melts plastic, here to help us with this no-nonsense guide to CAN bus systems. Now, Steph is a good friend of mine who helps me with all my Linux needs because I'm absolutely terrible at it. So without further ado, here's Steph. Hey everyone, it's Steph here from Old Guy Melts Plastic. Um, thanks, Kyle, for inviting me to collaborate with you on this video. Uh, thank you, everyone who's tuning in to watch. Um, you know, I myself have recorded some long form content on Canvas, but this is supposed to be a more condensed version, easier to consume for those people who don't want to sit through hours of me droning on. Um, this is the first time I'm appearing on video in any of the videos that I've uh, created. So thank you to Kyle for uh, convincing me to do this. Um, if things go sideways, hey, it's on you, buddy. <laughs> Fair enough, Steph. All right, everybody, let's dive in. Sounds good. All right, so the very first thing we want to do is terminal into the Raspberry Pi device, and we're going to put in this command. You can find this command in the video description below. This will open up a text editor with the can zero file in the appropriate directory. I've already set this up, so I already have the correct configuration in here. You can copy this these configuration files or, or lines from the video description below. And what we're doing here is basically telling it to initialize the can zero network. Uh, allow hot plug means that um, it'll work with USB devices where you plug and unplug the USB devices. So we have a kind of a plug and play setup. The uh, other values here that are important to know is the bit rate. The bit rate needs to be the same value that you use when you're flashing the firmwares. So either the catapult or clipper firmwares um, to the tool head, you'll want to make sure that you're leveraging that same bit rate across the entire configuration because this version of the CAN bus protocol does not have the ability to auto negotiate speeds if devices are set for different speeds. So everything needs to be set for the same speed. So that's the bit rate and we have it set to a million. And then the other value here that we set is the TXQ length to 1024. That represents the amount of packets that can be buffered uh, for communications purposes. So it gives you a bit of, um, bit of extra leeway if things are slowing down on the Pi. I find these values to be sufficient for my needs, and I've used them across three different printers now. Um, you can adjust them if you feel like it, but I just like to stick with values that I know work for me. So to get out of this, we're going to simply control X. It'll ask you if you want to save the modified buffer. You say yes, and then it'll prompt you for which file you're saving into. I just hit enter here, and it drops me back to the command prompt. With that, our CAN Zero network is set up and ready to initialize once we connect some CAN devices to the um, appropriate interface. All right, so the U2C is very simple. We're going to run a cable from our Raspberry Pi all the way into the U2C, and you're going to put it in power mode by removing that pin. Once you have power to it, you're gonna press and reset and let go of that boot button. All right, so after you've plugged in the USB cable into the UTC while holding down the boot button, you let go of the boot button, that should put the UTC into DFU mode, which we can confirm by typing LSUSB in the terminal window. And we will see that there is a STM microelectronics uh, device in DFU mode. That is the UTC that we're expecting, so that's good. It's in DFU mode, so it's ready to receive the commands that we need for the next step. So we're gonna go first of all and um, get a file from uh, GitHub. The uh, esoterical GitHub has this file hosted on, on their uh, GitHub page. And then we're gonna issue a command to basically flash that file to the UTC device. And so let's go ahead and hit enter. And we see that the file is downloading. It's taking a moment. So we see at the bottom here, file downloaded successfully, which is what we wanna see. You can ignore this error that falls uh, underneath that. 
um, those errors are not relevant. The important part here is that we see that the file was downloaded successfully. So now if we go back to the top of the screen here, and if I type IP space ADDR, we can see that the CAN0 network is established and running, and it is in an up state. So that's good. Our settings that we had set previously of uh, transmit queue length of 1024 is there in place. So it's now ready to um, accept communications from other CAN, zero, CAN devices on that CAN0 network. So the part with the UTC is now done. Okay, now that we have this thing uh, wired up and the pin in the right place for pairing mode and power over USB, I'm going to take some things like these two Allen wrenches and I'm going to go ahead and locate the reset and the boot buttons. I'm going to hold them both down. I'm going to release the reset and then the boot. That should get us into DFU power mode and how we're going to determine that is by looking at the Raspberry Pi in the SSH terminal. So back to you, Steph. Thanks, Kyle. So to verify that the EBB36 is now in DFU mode, again, we're going to issue the LSUSB command. And we do see that there is an STM device in DFU mode here. As we've already dealt with the UTC and flashed the updated firmware to it, this now represents the EBB36, which is ready to accept flash commands as well. So the next thing we want to do is install Catapult. If you followed other CAN bus guides on the internet, uh, Catapult was previously known as CAN boot. So if you've seen references to flashing CAN boot firmware to the toolhead PCB, uh, we're now going to use the updated version of CAN boot, which is called Catapult. So to grab Catapult, we're going to use these commands. We're going to CD into the current home directory of the uh, Pi user in this case. Uh, we're going to issue a git clone command to go and pull the updated Catapult files from the ArcSign GitHub. And then we're going to go into the Catapult directory and run make menu config. Now, in my case, I already have Catapult installed on my Pi, so it is going to give me an error during the git clone process that the uh, file already exists or the directory already exists. You can just ignore that. You shouldn't see that if you don't already have Catapult installed on your system. Um, and we'll take it from there. OK, and here I've previously configured the Catapult deployment for the um, EBB36, so it has all the correct settings. You can just pause the screen here if you want and update your settings accordingly and make menu config. When you're done, you can click on quit to save. Um, in this case, I haven't made any changes, so it didn't prompt me to save. But if you had made any changes, it would ask you if you want to save and you say yes. With that, we're now ready to make the file. So. Okay, with the file made, um, I am going to once again issue a command here, just updating something. Bear with me a moment. And let's clear the screen and get us back to the top here. So the next step is to actually flash the catapult firmware to the EBB36. And you can do that with this command. As we saw before, when we were flashing the U2C, we got file downloaded successfully at the end of this, which is what we want to see. And again, you can ignore this error message that comes after that. Um, the important part here is that the file was successfully downloaded to the EBB36 device. Now that we're done doing the basic part on this, I'm going to plug my USB back into the U2C, put the printer on its side, and we're going to go ahead and get the wiring done. Now, a few things to make very important here, or important to point out. On the back of these, Big Tree Tech was nice enough to tell us which one was high and low. So if you're using the Molex connectors like I did, 
I'm using the mini Molex. Um, it actually tells you high, low, plus and minus. So plus and minus obviously is power and ground and then can high and can low. So whatever colors you decide to use on your wiring for can high and can low, whether it be green or yellow, just make sure that the exact same thing is done on this side or you're gonna have a nightmare of communication problems. On the back of this, it actually tells you H and L for high and low, plus and minus, power and ground. So can high and low is the top ones. And same thing with this guy, it's pretty simple. Um, can H, can L written right here. So you know the outside connector on the SB2209 is actually the low. So just make sure that you pay attention to how you're wiring this. Those two wires can get flipped around and you know, it's not really a big deal, but more of an annoyance and wondering why isn't anything connecting? Just make sure you have the wires done right the first time to minimize your headaches. Okay, so the next thing is we want to make sure that our CAN bus is actually secured to the tool head, whether it's the EBB36 or the SB2209. We want to make sure it's actually secured and bolted to something because you might end up doing a boo-boo like I did and uh, frying one. This guy fell down and touched the heat bed and definitely arced after the power was turned on and burned some chips up. So definitely not fun and it was definitely crappy having to wait a few days to get another one. However, now that we have the new one installed, we can continue this process. So back to you, Steph. Ouch. Thanks for that lesson, Kyle. I've fried my share of electronics over the years, so always a good idea to do what you can to minimize any potential dangers to yourself and to the hardware that you're working with. Um, so next we're going to look at the EBB36 and we want to flash clipper to it. Now that it's been connected via the CAN bus wires to the U2C and the system's basically ready to go, it has um, catapult flash to it already. The next step is to flash clipper to the EBB36. And so we're going to do that um, over catapult, in fact. So the way to do that is, first of all, we're going to go back into our Pi uh, we're going to cd into the clipper directory now personally i like to update clipper when i do this um, to the latest version and you do that with a git pull from the clipper directory you can skip this step if you're the, not the type to pull updates um, on a regular basis if you'd rather take a more considered approach to updating clipper in your system but in my case i am going to pull and uh, it says i'm already up to date with the latest version so no new clipper version for me today the next thing we're going to do is uh, do a make clean again, just to make sure that there's nothing uh, in the clipper directory that's kind of hanging out there from a previous make run. And we're going to do make menu config. Now, once again, I do already have this set up for the EBB36. So there's no change here. Um, it's, you know, the settings are similar to what we saw when we flashed uh, catapult to it earlier. So um, in this case, we're still running with the 1 million CAN bus speed, which we have set in the CAN0 file previously, um, and everything else matches up. So we're just going to hit quit here. If it prompts you to save, do say yes to save, and then we're going to do make. Wait for it to finish. It just takes a moment or two. Almost done.
All right, so now that it's made the clipper.bin file, the next thing to do is to check to see that we have the uh, UUID showing for the EVB36. And the way we do that is by issuing this command. So again, the commands that you see here can be copied and pasted from the video description below. Okay, so we do see that it did find a CAN bus UUID, which I know is my EBB36 from previous experience. In my case, this EBB36 already has Clipper flash to it. Um, but if you did not previously flash Clipper to your EBB36, you would see application listed as CAN boot or catapult, depending on what version of um, the bootloader you had flashed to it previously. So the UUID that you see here is a value you're gonna to wanna to keep because you're gonna use it in the next command. And that next command is where we're actually gonna flash Clipper that we just made, clipper.bin file, to the EBB36. So once again, let's go back to the top of the screen. I'm going to run this over the CAN bus network, so of the CAN wires, um, to the UID that I copied from the previous command. And in this case, we're flashing the clipper.bin file from the clipper out directory. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And there you have it. This is a successful flash of Clipper after previously flashing Catapult to the EBB36. And with this, um, I personally like to do a, a reboot or reset of the printer to get it where it's going. But the next step is to uh, update your printer.cfg and any associated files with the pins, the pins associated with the EBB36 where applicable. So anything on the tool head, uh, the hot end, the extruder, um, everything there, um, your limit switches, if you have a X um, end stop or a wired X end stop or things like tap or you know, beacon, um, they may need to be wired in via the tool head as needed. Uh, maybe not beacon, beacon's a bad example, beacon has its own connection, but anything that's attached to the tool head, uh, you might need to update the pin configurations for that. And we'll cover that in the next part of the video. All right. Well, thank you everybody for watching this. I hope this no nonsense guide to the Canva system worked well for you. I know it worked well for me. And of course, I always bother Steph with my Linux needs. And, you know, he's just been such a great supporter of me and my channel. I want to say a huge thank you to Steph. Please go follow his channel. If you're not already a subscriber, subscribe to him. He does amazing and crazy things that are absolutely awesome. Well, thank you very much, Steph. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks again, Kyle, for having me on the video. Um, appreciate you reaching out, and always happy to help a fellow, uh, you know, printer enthusiast. So um, it's and for everyone watching, if you see me online, you know, don't hesitate to send me a private message. I'm on Discord. I'm on most of the Discord servers. Is all old guy melts plastic. You can just find me as a you know straight Discord user as well as old guy melts plastic. Um, and if you want to, you know, send me a private message, uh, Gmail. Um, you can do that as well. You can probably guess what that email address is. I won't spell it out here, but you'll guess it in one, no problem. Um, and that's it for me. So I'm signing off. Thanks again, Kyle. It was great working with you. Hope to do more of these collab videos in the future. That was good, Steph. Thank you. Bye.